Hi there, sax friends. This is James Barger with some practice tips for the first ATSSB Allstate Etude, Fairling Etude number no. five in G major. The first impression that you leave with your listener is your sound. Thus, daily tone studies are incredibly important. I like to begin my daily practice sessions with long tones that cover the full range of the instrument. You can find my saxophone daily long tone studies in the top right corner of this video. Another important aspect of your development as a saxophonist is listening to great recordings of professional saxophone players. As a high school student, I spent many hours listening to recordings of Donald Sinta, Eugene Rousseau, Fred Hemke, Timothy McAllister, Claude DeLong, and so many others. With today's technology, you are never more than a few seconds away from listening to amazing recordings. I enjoy practicing slow etudes such as this one alongside tuning drones that can be found on any streaming platform. My personal favorites are the tuning CD and cello drones. My goal is to blend my sound into the drone so that no notes stick out because of their tone or tuning. An important aspect of a mature saxophone sound is vibrato, and you will definitely want to implement this into your performance. Vibrato on the saxophone is created by the gradual raising and lowering of the jaw, resulting in a slight pitch variation centered above and below the zero point. Here is a simple exercise that I enjoy practicing. Choose a scale, here I'll use G major, and play through each note in whole notes. Begin with two beats of straight tone, and then add two beats with a 16th note vibrato pulse. As you become more comfortable, gradually increase the tempo. One of the trickier aspects of this etude is the variety of rhythms that are used. The metronome will be your best friend in approaching this piece to instill a solid sense of time and prevent you from learning incorrect rhythms. I also suggest counting through the etude. I personally use the Eastman counting system before beginning to play through it. Another technique that I practice is articulating the subdivision of all long notes. You can find a copy of the subdivided version of this etude in the description below. Begin by playing along with the bottom line, then go back and play the etude as written while a teacher, friend, or this video accompanies you with the bottom part. If the rhythms are accurate, the parts should line up perfectly. 
Notice that all of the ornamentation is absent at this stage. Trills and grace notes should be added only after you can play the entire etude accurately and comfortably without. This etude is very clearly marked with dynamic suggestions. Be sure that you are observing all of these. I suggest exaggerating the dynamics a bit more than you think you need to. A good test is to record yourself performing the etude and listen back with your eyes closed. Can you hear all of the dynamic levels as well as crescendos and decrescendos? If not, the judges will not notice them either. The phrases in this etude fall in between breath marks or rests, and each one must help to convey the story of the music. Look for goal points in each phrase. Often these are the highest note and or the one with the longest note value, and lead the listener to these notes. Rather than playing from note to note, think about threading the notes together with a fast, steady airstream. Trills in the style of this etude should begin and end on the notated pitch and alternate with the next note above, always being sure to follow the key signature. Trills need not be incredibly fast nor rhythmically metered. You might experiment with starting slow and gradually increasing the speed of the trill to build intensity and direction through the note. For the trill in measure 17, I suggest using your side C fingering. For the trill in measure 22, finger the A sharp with your side fingering and execute the trill with the second finger on the left hand. Grace notes should be placed just before the beat and also need not be incredibly fast. For the grace note C sharps in measures 3 and 27, you can get from D to C sharp by simply raising the first two fingers on the left hand. If you have questions about working on this etude or helpful advice for others, please be sure to leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Happy practicing.